Well, welcome back, everyone. Uh, I'm just getting set up for the next talk, Interactive GI Dashboards for Any Data. I'm just adding you into the mix. They're going to start recording at the top of the hour. OK. Um, is that little logo thing in the top corner going to be in the way of your slides? Is that sorry? The little uh, Phosphor G logo in the top corner. Is that going to be in the way of your slide deck? No, 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 no. So you can leave it there. So it's no problem if it's, I don't think it's messing with okay. anything. So okay. it's fine. Sounds good. Yeah. Nice. You should have put it. <laughs> okay. And we've got like a minute or so to chit chat. Um, I just would like everybody to wave to Ian in the chat or introduce yourself or use the little emoji things to clap. And the most important thing you can do is ask questions. So please ask questions. Um, we've got some time for those at the end. Um, I'm going to wave and get off stage, and I'll come back with about a minute to go. OK. This is the part where we can have an awkward silence until the recording starts. <laughs> Remember to turn off the banner. That's great. What a lovely Phosphor, t Phosphor G t-shirt you have. Okay. Well, thank you very much <laughs> for joining us. Um, I think this is your second uh, kick at the can. I'm sorry that I messed up our streaming room earlier in the week. And I'm really glad we had a chance to reschedule you. So I'm looking forward to this talk the second time. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Jody. It's a, it's a pleasure. A pleasure. And um, well, good evening, good afternoon <laughs> to everyone, depending on where you are. And very pleased to be to be here. Uh, finally, having back a uh, Phosphor-G, very long waited for, for everyone. So ready to, to share with you. Um, and start with the presentation. So uh, the presentation is about uh, interactive uh, dashboards which integrate uh, geographic information. A little bit of introduction in my company, we work with the government and also GIS. So uh, we have the need to combine information in both worlds and make things uh, with added value for both for both of them, for the people who are known as spatial and the people who are spatial, who, who, as we are, are dealing with spatial data. So in the few years ago, we started to incorporate in the part which is known GIS, started to incorporate a analysis of data, business intelligence, and in the very beginning of these kind of tools, the geographic information was not properly displayed. So uh, we realized we need to do something to add value to, to our customers as geographic information for for everyone. I think no matter where your business is strictly related or not, but in the end it's a point or a line or it's located in the space. So in the end you are you are dealing with it. So we started to think about what to, to do. We tried with different technologies and in the in the very last in our very last iter in our last iteration we came with a with a solution based on superset and uh, also mapea which is a layer on top of open layers which is the one that I'm going to present you uh, this well the reason of this uh, as I've commented before is the the really power that the maps provide to the to the data Imagine this very this very same slide without these maps wouldn't have the same the same sense for for no one. Even though you can also zoom in, zoom out, and all the all the charts are are updated, so you can see perfectly which is the, the improvement on the on the information that you are sharing with with the people. So, uh, getting a little bit into into detail with the technology, uh, I have commented a little bit before. Uh, we we are using Apache Superset as a the base for 
for the business intelligent part purely purely the charts and all the graphs and those beautiful uh, slices and, and bars and uh, it is uh, deployed with a post uh, GIS with a post SQL database where we pick up everything and we have related the the special data superset by default uh, has a, a good a very very nice integration with with mapbox so you can have all all the data displayed in your in your dashboards but the thing is that well as you know mapbox has uh, has had a little change in the, the terms of use so uh, our clients which are mainly a uh, public sector couldn't afford a, a dashboard containing map a map box uh, map so we tried to put uh, a different thing inside the apache superset so uh, we deployed a, a plugin with open layers and, and mapea Mapea, which is um, an open source project on top of on top of uh, open layers to give it a little bit more functionality so uh, well uh, we will come back to how we did it how we did the the GIS plugin but first let's see more or less how the the process of publishing information works uh, this is the traditional uh, publication for for data for a uh, for a non-GIS data where we load the data row then we made some tricks in the database we mix things and produce uh, indicators and the superset give you the chance to mix things dynamically in SQL queries so what I have said before about mixing data and so on to produce the indicators can also be done on the fly so it's a very powerful tool superset is what, what i can say not only for for the js yes, but also for the for the part of usual charts uh, then you have the the chance to have a filtering for all the for all the graphs uh, sorry for all the charts that you are publishing and then all the all the dashboard that you that you have created here is updated according with with the with the chosen selection okay so if, if in a moment you choose a type of element here all the things that are pending on it which are actually connected to each other are updated automatically also superset provides a lot of roles and security so you can use it uh, in different ways you can use it to create several tabs or sheets to share with different kind of users and see and do it as a um, standalone dashboard based on superset or you can you can also embed which is a very very good functionality each of these little parts of the dashboard you can embed it in, in a web page so you manage it behind and then you include it in a in a in a different uh, application you you deal with course you deal with all those <laughs> those things it not, will not be straightforward but uh, i'm sure it's not new to you so you you will be able to do so uh, but let's see how how we do it for for special data for special data uh, the approach is very much the same as long as we have uh, all the information in the in the table table together with a table with a reference layer with for example countries or all the dots that we are locating in the all the dots lines all the polygons all the geometries that are representing something with an id then in the end what you are doing is to combine everything in a in a single table or in a single view or in a single sql query and that is what is displayed here then uh, once you are able to produce a map uh, a map viewer with the layer that you want to to show in the that you want to show from the from the database 
then you can choose styles and you can choose color types of, of representation depending on the capabilities that your uh, map uh, library support which means uh, that we are using some of the functionalities of open layers to be able to display kind of heat maps or clusters or that kind of maps and layers so uh, once we have been able as i've commented once we have been able to to generate the this table and publish a let's say a row layer what we need to do is to to select the kind of the kind of map then as i have commented we have we have this one which is a clusters nothing new for you we have the heat map we have uh, only the geometries we have core we which is uh, well, I'm sure you know it's a classification by, by color and uh, proportion symbols where you have a, well, a symbol that is growing more or less depending on the value that you have there. Also, we have been able to to make a little one with a with a little pie chart on, on top of each of each point when you are grouping grouping things. So, well, then uh, I will show you in the I reserve a few minutes in, in the end of the presentation for for a kind of demo. So you can see it in action and how it it works more more or less. So uh, well, how uh, the next question to to ask probably is how how we have done the, all this because I have as I have commented before, uh, Mapbox was, was there, but unfortunately, well, but we could uh, it was a no go for for us in our case so we needed to put a different thing there as commented we we use it open layers and uh, a layer on top of it to do it the the way that we are displaying things on, on open layers so we substituted it and uh here i'm pointing in this in this slide how we were able to make this this display inside superset and integrated with the with the interface the thing is that uh, in the end when you have a, a map library and you want to display something mm, well let me let me speak like this you in the end only need the the, the data to display uh, and the style uh, representation style so uh, for the we embedded the source code of the of mapea for open layers and then uh, we started to to show it to link it to the to superset superset has a, a few for the for example for the styles has a few options and what we did for the style and in the end it is uh, stored in the database and each time you store it in the in the database then uh, it is sent it is retrieved and and sent to the to the map so there what uh, what we did was to make a kind of hook of the of this call and take the take the style and translate it to translate it to to something that was able to be understood by by mapea and, and open layers so we were using in, in that sense for for the displaying we will see it in the in the demo we will see that uh, we are using the same interface that superset provides but uh, adapted it uh, the functioning to to this other library then also for for the data this is another thing to do once we have the, the display well we have start we start with the data actually but uh, the way to pass it uh, the data is stored in the database so what we did each time that you call the the map is to provide the the gi information but in geojson format there we we didn't go very very far i mean we didn't make a rocket science thing and just made a python script in the middle which uh, picked up the the geometries well all the all the data needed to be displayed as a geojson and just embedded send it to the to the map and and then it was displayed 
this is uh, well not a uh, very <laughs> very nice or well you can you know how these things are the this kind of uh, changes uh, but i think that uh, it was a nice thing because it, it finally worked so let's see some some approaches. One once you have the the graphs and the data, you can you can integrate them together, as we see here, together with charts and, and maps and interactions, or you can integrate them separately. You can use it. The as I have commented, you can embed it, and on top and on top of it, you can put uh, more things and the the graph. The, sorry, the charts related to this to this map. So you can use it as a standalone dashboard, as we can we can see it here, or you can integrate it outside. You can embed the dashboard, or you can embed the the map. And uh, it's it's as easy as preparing your dashboard behind in the admin part, and then embedding it into your web page. After this. Uh, what's next for us? For us, uh, next is to polish all this. We have been able to make it work. It is working nicely. It's reliable, but we still need uh, to make it smoother. So uh, starting by an Apache Super Set Upgrade, where we will try to go to the latest version, which is uh, 1.3 and make this integration in there and also a, an npm module so the the map integration is is considered yeah, a more a more reliable or a more structured plugin to be integrated in superset and then uh, we can also think on integrating the publishing wms services or or even vector vector tiling from the superset database and then applying them to to the map. So uh, let's go quickly because I think uh, I've gone slow for the for this, and uh, I will show you quickly some some cases uh, as I've been commenting. Uh, as you can see, this is the case where we have a, a map. It's a cluster map. Usual nothing, nothing new to, uh, to you. As I've commented here, it's only the the map well, what has been embedded. There you go. You can click here and there, and uh, finally you can go uh, and have embedded together with the with the view that you are having a lot of information on what you're seeing here. In this case, it's it's a dashboard on the security that a, a local entity has. Considering different parameters in their in their shop, well, in all the in all the buildings who who which provided the the info, restaurants, pharmacies, number of hospitals, and depending on that, you can you can have an index and, and an idea on, on how safe it could it could be or how secure is the destination. Uh, in this other case, let me go for a little more, a little bit forward. What we have is a, a dashboard, as as we have commented before, where we have a we have chosen a, a heat map, and you can interact with it. And in case that you that you are interested in in only one one zone of the of the dashboard. Then, as you can see, you can you can choose it here, and all you choose one of the of the districts. These are tourist apartments from Airbnb, uh, and then all the it takes a little bit. All the graphs and the maps are updated uh, accordingly. So, well, here the performance was was not very good, but uh, I can say that it's really really awesome when when you have it on, on production. So, so once you have it there, you you have the heat maps, these heat maps linked with with data. And what I wanted to show you now, well, this is one kind of heat map, heat map. Uh, on the same the same approach as you are filtering in the map, the graphs are, are updated uh, and so on. Uh, I wanted to show you something more. Well, clusterings, the same. You can put together the 
the timelines you can zoom into into timelines and then everything is shown to the user some some of sorry some of the graphs the charts are connected and related to the map and some others aren't this case isn't but it can be connected and uh, as you can see you can have a really really nice information and detail as it is desired by the user and the last very very last pending thing i have two minutes but i wanted to to show you how the how the visualization is is done here is the part on the on the on the administration where we choose which kind of map and how are we presenting it we are making a uh, a list of uh, let's say of tweets we are grouping it in in a certain number of clustering from two to 100 100 to 50 you can choose colors you can choose the limits and uh, as i have commented the process here is that you have the superset interface and uh, and then it is stored in the database and by the process that i have told you before it is converted to to a style that can be understood by the by the map and then it, it is coming back okay not only for clustering but for all for all the well you can also choose the choose a, a list of uh, layers to be displayed and here interest uh, the kind of map that you can that you can integrate a heat map cluster point some statistics multi so in case you want to make another choice and change the clustering for a heat map you just choose the other and then you can again go with a with the interface and make it a, well in the color uh, that you desire the radius the count and, and all this and uh, this is it i think that uh, it's, a, it's a nice time to and <laughs> fair enough. It is okay. Thank you very much. Um, the number one question from the chat, but first of all, you've been getting lots of really good compliments on your graphics design and how beautiful the, the presentation and, and the product looks. Uh, so the first question is, have you looked at MapLibri and open source open data for your, uh, for your product to replace Mapbox? Uh, definitely, definitely. Indeed, uh... We need to rethink things. I mean, we came in a in a moment when it came in a moment when everything was not as clear as now. But uh, we have made a, a long, a little bit a long, not a long run, but a, we have been with this uh, solution. But MapLibre is definitely a an option to to consider here mm -hmm. uh, maybe in the mo in the very moment that we go to the superset upgrade we will that will be the moment where we need to decide if decide if we continue with this approach or if we go for map libre but definitely we need we need to consider it yes. yeah certainly um or pass the cost on to your customers uh, <laughs> i'll try the next question is, have you any experience with knowledge uh, for business intelligence? No, 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 no. Okay. Let's Sorry, but I'm not but I'm noting it and taking note of it. Uh, I'll be happy to, to have a look at it. Okay. Thank you very much. And the next one's a, a technical one about Superset. Does Superset natively support maps or was that a custom widget that interacts with a Superset API? A uh, superset uh, included uh, in the version that we are dealing with included the Mapbox plugin. So uh, what we did was changing it, changing and adapted the the open layers and the Mapea and substitute the the Mapbox plugin. So okay. we interact with the with the API, and yes, uh, that's how, how we have made it. Okay. Thank you. I'm just checking back if there's any more questions from the chat. I don't see any. Thank you very much for sneaking in as one of the last presentations of the event. And um, yeah, uh, thank you for participating in Phosphor G. Thank you very much. I uh, really appreciate it. Have fun. Bye. <laughs>